It's 7 p.m. in New Westminster, and the daily salute outside of Royal Columbian Hospital is healing for many. I know that for me, it is both a balm to my spirit and a way to connect to my community. While many have turned to various church services to minister to the needs of the spirit, we're also using this daily salute to give ourselves encouragement. We give that encouragement to both our frontline workers in healthcare and all those behind the glass windows of RCH who are trapped by circumstance and the ongoing fear of losing our ability to flatten that curve. We come together, all of us, each night at 7 p.m. to applaud, to bang our pans, to show our thanks, and even to honk our horns, just to know that we're not alone. Like our need to stay home and stay physically healthy, we need to take care of our mental health, our inner spirit, but right now, the quest for it can seem difficult. With two months into the pandemic, whether you have a formal belief system or not, these are the times we want to reach out for ways to create a bit of inner strength to see us through the long haul. But we aren't alone in our quest. Local churches, aware of the need for social distancing, are finding ways to use technology to reach out to their congregations and stay connected when our spirits feel battered by the rapid changes to our reality. One of these is Sapperton's Unitarian Church. They usually would be holding services at the local pensioners hall, but everything's changing, and that includes how many are attending services. I spoke with Meg Roberts, a minister with the Unitarian Church here in New Westminster, who is using Zoom to connect in a variety of ways to her congregation during these days of pandemic. So um, I'm the minister at Beacon Unitarian Church, and um, it's meets in New Westminster at the Sapperton uh, Pensioners Hall normally. <laughs> what we've noticed is that this kind of opportunity for people to share during a time like this, where many people are in an existential crisis. And so having support in a spiritual community is, is vital. And so whether it's a spiritual community that, um, that they had as part, have had as part of their life or if they're out there looking, I think it is really important to connect with a community that has grounding. And Unitarians have been around for over 400 years. So Beacon's a smaller community, and we knew what really is going to be important is for people to connect. The level of anxiety, of feeling overwhelmed, of feeling, feeling un, unsure, was going to be paramount for how we were going to be able to respond as a spiritual community to support each other. So um, I, my background, uh, I worked in theater as an actor and a stage manager and working towards directing. And I also then decided that for me, really finding the meaning of life and being able to share that with others and explore that was really part of that calling for me about how I wanted to be in the world. So I brought being a creative artist together with a, a spirituality and I found the Unitarian community. And so it was a great fit. And so being able to draw some of that on that background and look at how do we create opportunities for people to connect in meaningful ways using technology. And so we decided rather than trying to live stream or record something and upload it, that we were really gonna use Zoom because I think it's a, it's a useful platform to be able to create ways for people to see each other because I think that's so important when you've been isolated and you feel alone is to actually see familiar faces. Now, usually, not always, but in our Sunday services, um, we're often facing front to be able to see, you know, the, the choir and the music, um, and the musician and whoever it is that's offering the, the reflection that day, whether it's me or somebody from the community. And there are times where we reconfigure and face each other. But this was incredibly powerful, and that's what we really heard from people. We, we had one Sunday where we, we didn't offer anything because we wanted to just regroup ourselves, and then we offered it the following Sunday. And the feedback we got was the importance of being able to see each other, the importance of being able to hear from each other. So part of the adaptation from going from a Sunday service in person to Zoom is recognizing that people's attention span is different. 
not only because it's technology, but also in a time of crisis, you know, our reptilian brains um, are the ones that are really uh, hyperactive. And so we're less able to take in huge amounts of information. So being able to shorten that time and create more time for the ritual that Unitari the Unitarian community calls uh, joys and sorrows. And that's allowing people in the community to share a joy or a sorrow or a milestone and be received, be heard, kind of to be held in, held in, uh, in, in loving kindness and compassion. So those were two things that were really important for us in being able to, to use Zoom. Another thing that we knew was gonna be important is to be able to actually help integrate what people were experiencing. And as you likely know, Zoom has the capacity to do breakout rooms. And so on some Sundays, we really use that to be able to explore the topic for that day. And so it, it has really helped to be able to have people in smaller groups have a chance to reflect on a question of meaning, consider their response, hear each other's response. And I think the, the thing that I got when I was leading the break, breakout rooms is that people then recognize they're actually not alone, that the responses that they're having are common. They're unique to each person, but they see that, they're, that they also are with people who are having similar feelings, who, um, and then they hear from each other ideas of how to handle it. Thinking about how do I help communities that I'm working with go from being in person to being virtual. It touched off a place in me where I felt vulnerable, where I felt I wasn't good enough, where I felt like I didn't have the skills. And, and that left me in a place that I felt awful. What I had to remind myself was, is that I have other people that I can turn to. I have colleagues, I have resources. But I think even more importantly was to recognize that it doesn't matter if I don't know everything. I don't have to know everything. This isn't about perfection. And this just happens to be the theme for, um, for May, for the community I'm working with, is imperfection, is that whatever I can do right now, I can do. I have to cut, cut myself slack. And if I don't get everything done today, because my brain just isn't working as effectively, that's okay. And so being able to deal with that, the feeling of um, overwhelm by being able to just say, okay, I did the best that I could, and that's enough. And there's days still where I feel like I'm still not getting everything done that I want to. And so I have to remind myself about that, that you know, I call myself a recovering perfectionist, is being able to remind myself that whatever I can accomplish today is enough. And I have to remind myself, but I also have to remind other people of that. And really being able to cut each other some slack right now. I think for anybody who is watching this, who may not have a spiritual community and who is feeling the anxiety, the fear, the, the being overwhelmed by what's happening, who may be feeling isolated or inundated by all the information, what I think is very important is to, first of all, take good care of yourself. And so simplifying, I think right now is important. Being able to decide, okay, maybe I've got a couple of sources of information that I'll turn to maybe once a day, maybe twice, but to instead not spend as much time perhaps in on online or listening to the television or, or the radio, and instead use that time for self-care. And so what does that mean? So that means um, trying to eat well, get good sleep, have things that give you pleasure, whatever that might mean. And if, if right now even feeling pleasure feels more than you can manage, even just a feeling of some calm. So whether that it allows you to go outside, whether it means finding some resources online for um, quiet reflection or meditation, or even just sitting and listening to a favorite piece of music, something that will help to calm you. Because once we can calm our, our overexcited, overstimulated systems, then we're able to think more clearly. And part of the thinking clearly is to be able to go, okay, I have been through challenges before in my life. What has helped me? 
who can I turn to for support so I'm not alone? Who can I check in with every week? What is it my, in, in my own internal sources of strength that I turn to? Whether it's um, a belief in a higher power, whether it's understanding that you have strength and resilience within yourself, what are the things that give you hope and joy in life? And I think most importantly right now is gratitude. I know that there was one researcher that I was uh, looking at, into for the reflection I did this last Sunday that was talking about the importance of a gratitude practice. So I've been doing that. So when I go to bed at night and I'm lying there and my brain is busy from the day, is I just think of 10 things that I'm grateful for. I'm alive. What a gift. I have shelter and food and clothing. I have people I love and I'm loved by. I have a belief that it won't always be like this, that it will change. People have lived worse through wars. We will get through this together. And that I also understand that I'm not alone and that there's others out there that are experiencing this and I can get connected. I feel gratitude about the food that I've eaten that day. Maybe it's uh, something on the radio that I heard that made me laugh or a video somebody sent me. Even the simple thing of going, I am actually, I'm warm in my bed. I'm not out there uh, as many people are who are homeless, who are struggling. And that I have resources that I can share. And so what did I do to help others that day? Even if it was just saying hi to a stranger when I went out for a socially distanced walk. And I think lastly is just recognizing that life is a gift and it is here to be able to offer the gifts that we have for ourselves that we can help others. And so, and that's, that's a real blessing. But there are so many ways to discover not only our blessings, but also our reasons for gratitude here in New Westminster. For myself and many of my friends, our proximity to nature, particularly our many forests, are a way to not only be grateful, but find a bit of peace in all this chaos and uncertainty. Sometimes it means taking the time to take a brisk walk or bike ride through the nearby Brunette River Trail. Other times it may mean venturing a bit further to one of our many urban park trails. Wherever I go, I find that the forest can give me that peaceful center I need so often in these unreal times. In fact, the Japanese have a name for it, forest bathing, and there are times when it is another wonderful way to find that inner spirit. A friend of mine, Suzanne, introduced me to this idea. We recently chatted about this as she rests on one of her daily hikes. Today, she's on Burnaby Mountain. North Road Trail leading up to Burnaby Mountain. The outdoors is my best friend. When I come and step out that door of my apartment and that fresh air hits me, I'm gone. Okay, I got a smile on my face. And I'm going along. <laughs> Moving along, yes. <sighs> Even if my knee was sore. I still, I'll just go a slower pace. And so I just come up into this mountain. Usually it's the mountain that I explore and then hang out for an hour because of, it gives me, my best friend, it just gives me. All these trees give you, you know, they give off the compound um, that is healing. They give off, their energy is, uh, yeah, healing. So to just sit in it, you're supposed to sit in it for 20 minutes. And I have got these, you can see the backdrop. Yes. I've got these beautiful better, trees. Yeah. yeah. In the back of me, it's quiet. It gives me yoga peace. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to me, they speak to me. I'm going to put one of the days or two of the days, maybe three. It depends. People will find this secret that I have found. The peace, the joy, the calm that uh, the trees bring and nature brings. 
That's what I'm hoping for. But while Suzanne and I agree that being close to nature, to the trees that are such a part of living in New Westminster is our source of peace, not everyone finds that spirit within in the same way. For many, the best way to find that inner spirit is by finding a way to sit still and focus within. But that can be harder to accomplish than you may think. That is where having a friend like Connie, who teaches beginners how to meditate, can come in handy. When we talked earlier, she gave me a few guidelines on how to connect again to that inner spirit we all carry. I thought I would share them here with you. I find that uh, various mindfulness exercises are so valuable to me. How about I lead you and your viewers through a very short um, meditation practice mm -hmm. that can be basically done any place, any time. To do this, it's more effective if you close your eyes so that you're blocking out external um, stimuli as much as possible. Close your eyes. Take a nice, long, deep breath in. Let it out. Take another long, deep breath in. And as you breathe in, notice that your belly rises, your lungs fill up. Hold it for just a moment and let it out again. Take another long, cleansing, deep breath in and focus as you're breathing in, that you're breathing in calm. Breathe out calm, go back to normal breathing, and focus, thinking the word calm as you breathe in, and calm as you breathe out. And when you feel a little bit calmer, more relaxed, Open your eyes up and become fully present once again. So where do you need to go to create your own sense of spirit within during these days of COVID? Sometimes for me, I can hear it in the most ordinary of sounds, such as when I listen to the whoosh of the sky train when it goes by late at night. Perhaps for you, it can be found in the green of the fields and trees that surround us in this, our rainforest refuge. Or perhaps we find it in community. New Westminster is lucky to have such a diverse community. And so we can find solace in that, whatever size our community may be, and however we define that community we share. Sometimes it may be in an act of gathering to cheer your grandfather on while he recovers from surgery in hospital, being careful to social distance while gathering to give him joy and comfort from outside his hospital window. These acts can lift us up in times of sorrow, shed light into our darkness, and give us the peace we're all seeking in these days of uncertainty and doubt. For while COVID-19 may seem a constantly moving target with unwelcome surprises around every corner, one thing is certain. We all need to reach into that inner spirit that guides us all more than ever these days. But it is there, and it's waiting for each of us. So be calm, be kind to one another, and stay safe. We will meet again soon to give each other that needed hug of peace and security.